Hello and welcome to Eaton's Power Systems Experience Center. Today, I will talk to you about wind energy and its benefits to the environment that we share and how we incorporate wind here at the PSET. In this video, we will address a variety of topics within wind energy, such as what is wind energy and how does it work, types of wind turbines, why is it important, how does it relate to Eaton's Power Systems Experience Center, what are some considerations and challenges, and installing wind energy in your home or business. The term wind power describes the process by which wind is used to generate mechanical power and converts it to electrical power. Wind turbines work on a simple principle. Instead of using electricity to make wind, like a fan, wind turbines use wind to make electricity. To start, you may be wondering, how does it work? A simple wind turbine consists of four main parts, including a generator, rotor blades, which rotate when wind is blown over them, causing the rotor to spin, a shaft, which drives the generator, and a gearbox, which increases the rotational speeds from about 30 to 60 RPM to about 1000 to 1800 RPM. The rotor blades on a wind turbine work like an airplane wing or a helicopter rotor blade. This can be explained by Bernoulli's principle. When wind flows across the blade, the air pressure on one side of the blade decreases and the force causes the rotor to spin and transfers the mechanical power into rotational power. The rotor is connected to the generator through a shaft and a series of gears to speed up the rotation and the mechanical power is converted to electrical power. The term wind power refers to instantaneous power, or kilowatts, generated by wind turbines. This power generated over time is electrical energy, or kilowatt hours, which we often refer to as wind energy. Modern wind turbines fall within two categories, horizontal access turbines and vertical access turbines. Horizontal access wind turbines are what you probably pictured when thinking of wind turbines because they're the most common. They have three blades and operate upwind, with the turbine pivoting at the top of the tower so the blades face into the wind. The gearbox is situated at the top where the rotor is. Vertical access wind turbines, like the one we have here at the PSEC, have their access perpendicular to the wind streamlines and vertical to the ground. This arrangement allows the generator and gearbox to be located close to the ground, facilitating service and repair. There are three main applications where wind turbines are used. Distributed or small wind, which may be horizontal or vertical access type, large utility connected, or wind farms and offshore applications, both of which have historically been horizontal access type. Single small turbines are typically used for residential, agricultural, and small commercial and industrial applications. Small turbines can be used in hybrid energy systems, with other distributed energy resources in microgrids powered by sources such as generators, energy storage, and solar. These systems are called hybrid wind systems and are typically used in remote off-grid locations and are becoming more common in grid-connected applications for resiliency. Utility-scale wind turbines are a lot bigger than the ones you might see in a schoolyard or behind someone's house. Typical modern wind turbines have blade lengths of 20 to 45 meters and are rated between 500 kilowatts and 2 megawatts. If you double the blade length on a horizontal access wind turbine, you get an area which is four times larger and generates four times as much power. For example, if you compare a 5-foot blade radius to a 10-foot blade radius, by using the relationship for the area of a circle that the blades create, which is area equals pi r squared, you get an area of 78.5 square feet versus 314 square feet, respectively. This means that you get four times as much power output from the rotor by doubling the blade length. You may also be wondering why wind energy is especially important for our energy needs. Today, we are experiencing energy-related threats when we consider the finite amount of energy resources, such as fossil fuels, and environmental concerns with using these resources. Since wind power only requires wind to operate, does not consume other types of fuels, and emits no emissions, it's considered a renewable source of energy. 
In fact, wind power has one of the lowest environmental impacts of any source of electrical generation. Today in the U.S., wind energy accounts for about 100 gigawatts. The U.S. Department of Energy, or DOE, projects the U.S. to have 404 gigawatts of power capacity by 2050. That's enough to fulfill more than one-third of the nation's electricity needs if demand continues to hold steadily as estimated. Aside from the obvious environmental benefits, wind power is one of the most productive renewable energy sources. Not considering maintenance, the cost of operating a wind turbine is zero, since wind is a free resource and can generate electricity at about a third of the total cost of diesel, which makes it a great generation source for microgrids. Here at the PSEC, we have a 40-foot Windsax energy turbine that is rated for 2.8 kilowatts of power output. This WS40 model is actually capable of 3.6 kilowatts, but because of the topography and lower wind speeds here in Pittsburgh, some of the internal gearing has been customized to get the optimal amount of usable power at slower RPM operation. We are sacrificing our top end output power, or kilowatts of course, but the goal here is to maximize the energy or kilowatt hours that we get from the wind turbine. You can liken this to a marathon runner versus a sprinter. Yes, the sprinter may be able to run faster, but only for a short period of time, whereas the marathon runner can cover much more ground while conserving their stamina by running at slow and steady speeds. So how will the Windstacks interface with our microgrid? The generator on the Windstacks creates 48 volt three phase AC power that is rectified with a charge controller unit and fed into an inverter charger. This DC power is used to charge a green machine 20 kilowatt hour 48 volt DC battery that stores the energy from the wind turbine. The DC power is then inverted to AC power and fed into our microgrid. This system allows us to get the maximum amount of energy from the wind turbine. Energy is measured in kilowatt hours, which is power output added up over time. Because the power output of the turbine will vary, we can charge the battery and capture the maximum energy over a period. In times of overproduction, the battery will be charged to use later when the wind slows down. This battery also helps in times of low wind because it can supply power to keep the rated 2.8 kilowatts of output. This is called smoothing the power profile, which puts less stress on our microgrid because the power won't change drastically over time. We could also use the battery to inject larger chunks of the 20 kilowatt hour capacity through our microgrid to support the utility during high demand periods when the electricity is most expensive. On our microgrid here at the PSEC, we have Eaton Controls managing all of the other sources and loads for resiliency and cost savings. The other sources include solar panels, batteries and supercapacitors for energy storage, and also a natural gas generator. The diversity of sources and energy storage can meet a demand profile that is changing throughout the day. This keeps our microgrid power profile stable in reference to the larger utility grid, which contributes to overall grid stability. The goal is to use energy storage with renewables to keep the power profile flat from the utility source. This is financially and technically beneficial for end users and the utility. It's pretty clear that wind energy offers many advantages, which explains why it's one of the fastest growing energy sources in the world. However, there are some challenges that researchers are aiming at currently addressing. Some of the main power quality problems encountered in wind farms are significant line losses, power fluctuations and voltage distortion, uncontrollable reactive power, and low power factor. Wind farms are often located in remote locations where there is a large availability of land. Therefore, these wind farms tend to be far from cities where demand is high. This contributes to excessive line losses when transporting the power to the loads. This also poses potential technical issues, such as voltage fluctuations due to the variations in wind energy, since of course wind does not blow consistently all the time. Considering the intermittent nature of wind, voltage flicker can occur when large-scale wind power is connected to the grid. The connection of wind turbines to the distribution networks may affect the voltage quality. One of the factors contributing to this effect are the rapid variations of wind turbine output power, which cause respective fluctuations in the supply voltage, referred to as flicker, and may be noticed on nearby customers, especially on lighting circuits. When we think about the effects of reactive power and power factor concerns, we have to take into consideration that most wind turbines have doubly fed induction generators, or DFIGs. This means that the generator obtains reactive power from the grid and grid-connected systems. 
However, during isolated system operation, reactive power is created from external sources like batteries and capacitors. If you are interested in installing wind energy at your home or business, you might want to consider a grid-connected small wind electric system or a standalone system which requires some sort of energy storage, typically in the form of batteries. But the first step should always be to hire a professional or do a wind study of your location to ensure you will get the results you expect. A grid-connected system can be practical for you if you live in an area with average annual wind speed of at least 10 miles per hour for traditional horizontal access wind turbines, or maybe less for vertical access wind turbines. Utility supplied electricity is expensive in your area. The utility's requirements for connecting your system to its grid are not expensive. An off-grid hybrid electric system may be practical for you if you live in an area with average annual wind speed of at least nine miles per hour for traditional horizontal access wind turbines, or maybe less for vertical access wind turbines like the one we have here at the PSEC. A grid connection is not available or it's very expensive. You would like to gain energy independence from the utility and you would like to generate clean power. There are many benefits of wind energy and other renewable energy sources, but it's important to make sure you consider some of the challenges that we highlighted so you can get the most out of your wind installation. Here at Eaton's Power Systems Experience Center, we're always adding new solutions like our vertical access wind turbine, which connects to our microgrid to demonstrate how renewable energy sources interact. For more information about wind energy, contact us or your local Eaton representative to schedule a visit to the Power Systems Experience Center today.